starting? Yeah, good morning. My name is John Barry. Uh, Technical Marine is my company, and I've been doing electronics installation work on boats around here for about 20 plus years. I wanted to thank the Power Squadron for letting me, ha letting me be here, and also for improving safety and boating in general. You guys do a great job on that, so. Um, I'm covering a lot of different subjects. I'm really just gonna skim through fairly quickly because you know, one hour, there's a lot to marine electronics. And uh, so if there's something that you want me to go a little deeper on, just stop and ask a question. Otherwise, I'm just gonna skim from subject to subject to subject. Uh, just to let you know some more about me, I fell in love with boating about 30 years ago when I was living aboard my uh, Romer 35, 1956 steel hull boat. And uh, I had only a compass on it. The first time I crossed the lake, uh, I found out what, why you need marine electronics. About halfway across, it got a little foggy. And uh, all of a sudden I looked up and there was a big freighter. And I didn't know he was there until I was not too close, but I was close enough to make me nervous. And then when I hit the other side, I was about five miles off from my destination. And so as you know, a radar could have spotted that, uh, that freighter easily. And uh, as far as being off from your destination, when you drive by a compass, you know, it doesn't tell you a lot about wind and current, and also compasses have a lot of inaccuracies in them themselves. And these days, when you buy a piece of marine electronics, basically most people are buying a multifunction display. So it starts life as a chart plotter, and then you add radar and fish finder to it. So, these multifunction displays come in a lot of different sizes and a lot of different functions, but something true about them all is you really want the biggest one you can fit on your boat, the biggest one you can afford. It's usually limited by budget or the uh, helm real estate requirement. So you buy a chart plotter and then you add a radar to it, you add a fish finder to it, you can add a lot of other stuff to it like video in and AIS and we'll be covering some more about those. Um, the basic function of a chart plotter is to get you from point A to point B. Um, you enter a waypoint, that's your destination, and the, the chart plotter will draw a line from your boat to that destination. Um, when you start driving along that line, you know, and progressing towards your destination, it's going to give you your estimated time of arrival, time to go, and stuff like that. Um, as you go along, if you get off of that line a little bit, there's an error, the line's here and your boat's over here, that's called cross-track error, and we'll be covering a little more about that. Um, go ahead to the next screen. One of the other things that's come out recently is the ability to overlay uh, the radar on top of the chart. The chart plotter shows you a picture of what was there when they made the chart. It might have been last year or five years ago. The radar is giving you an image of what's there right now. So when you overlay the two, you get a very, very good, useful uh, presentation that allows for collision, collision avoidance and navigation at the same time. So overlaying radar is uh, a desirable feature. These things also have video in. Tom is gonna show you uh, these, these FLIR night vision cameras, the thermal imagers. This, this stuff is really, really good. At close range, you really, seeing a black and white image of the thing is better than seeing a radar image. I mean, this is like having eyes at night. And uh, even in complete, literally zero light, these things do uh, generate an image. So um, with the chart plotters, depending on your boat, you may want to have multiple displays, like one on the flybridge or one downstairs, or sometimes even two side by side. This gives you more screen to work with because when you, you, know, you might want to put the radar on this screen and maybe the, a video image over here with the fish finder split. So more real estate, more square inches of display space is, all, is very desirable. So um, <laughs> what I've done also is put these things out, the, these things have video output now. So you can put the video out and put it on the TV downstairs. That may or may not be useful for navigating, but it's a feature that's, that's available. So go ahead and flip it. The chart plotter is nothing more than, than a paper chart in electronic form. And in order to get your boat to show up on that chart, you need a GPS sensor. So we've all seen these little mushrooms, you know, you've all got one on your boat, I'm sure, probably in your cars also. Um, the GPS sensor is, is not a smart, very smart device. It puts out your position, latitude and longitude, and course and speed, and the, and the time of day. So. Uh, that's all you really get from that. Everything else is a calculation off of that. 
If you know your latitude and longitude, and you know the latitude and longitude of where you're going, there's a mathematical calculation as far as range and bearing, how to get there. One of the things you'll find out about these things, though, is if you don't know how to operate it, it does you absolutely no good. So every time you use your boat, you should be operating the electronics. Even if you're just going out to try the boat out, you should turn this stuff on and use it. If you haven't used it before and you get into a situation where you need it, reading the book is not really an option at that point. So uh, be sure to, to, be sure to uh, practice with the things. The, uh, when you decide to go to a waypoint, one of the easiest things to do on all the chart plotters have this function called go to cursor. So you simply put your cursor over there where you want to go and you say go to cursor and it, that's the simplest operation. Um, the go to waypoint uh, function means that you've, given, you've set a point, not just the cursor point, but you've given that point a name and then it'll come up in your waypoint list. And then you can select to go to a waypoint from your waypoint list um, and you can select to go to multiple waypoints. I don't know how many people do Lake Michigan, but if you're going from Chicago to Milwaukee, there's this thing called Wind Point that sticks way out in the lake, and it's a shallow spot. So if you try to drive a straight line from Chicago to Milwaukee, you're going to drive right through Wind Point. So you have to set up a point outside and then come back in to clear Wind Point. So that would be an example of when you would use two waypoints in, in what they call a route. And, um, so you can put a, hundreds of waypoints in a route. You can put a route all the way up to Mac Island and back with m bunches of waypoints and then uh, you know, run that route. Some autopilots will auto-sequence the routes. They'll get to the first waypoint and then turn to the next one and turn to the next one. A very dangerous feature, <laughs> as you can imagine. But uh, some autopilots have come out with that, that uh, functionality now. So again, remember that uh, size matters on this stuff. The bigger displays are so much easier for us old guys to use. Um, so uh, there are also black box units. You know, typically what you think of is a display uh, that's a dedicated display that you can actually use and has buttons. But there are also black box units that live underneath the helm and then use a monitor. So if you wanted to go to a 19 or a 20 inch display, you use a black box unit and a monitor and a keypad, and that allows you to uh, put a really big screen thing on your boat.